just want to make a really quick video just to clarify my position yet again. Um, had one of you, my viewers out there, bring up the fact that there's a lot of uh, brethren that attack me on the, the biggest issue I get attacked on is the thing of my stands against church buildings. And a lot of people write me and a lot of people, they present this thing of you teach this and I think I, I've never taught that. Okay, and they skew my position that I take. Okay, so I need to occasionally clarify because people don't take the time to go back and watch older videos where I plainly laid things out. And so I'll put some videos at the end of this one that talk more, get into more depth and whatever else on the whole church building issue. Um, I just need to clarify my stand on church buildings. Okay, I do not teach, nor have I ever taught, that you can only worship in a home and that anything other than a home worship is evil and satanic. I've never taught that. I have never taught that you should not fellowship with other Christians. That is another lie that is said about me. I like to fellowship with other Christians. You say, why don't you videotape it? Because I don't need to do that. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not going to do that. I respect people's privacy and things. You know, there's no point in that. Okay, I am very much, I, I like very much to speak to other Christians. Um, fellowshipping is fine. All right, so those are the two biggest things. Brian says that you have to worship in a house, and which is not true. And Brian is against fellowshipping with other believers, which is not true. Those are two lies. And if somebody says that about me, then you are lying. You are bearing false witness against me. And God will hold you accountable for that. Why am I against church buildings? Number one, because most of them are under IRS code 501c3, section 501c3, for tax-exempt status. Therefore, they are controlled by the federal government. You are told what to do and what to say. That's a problem. Show me any scripture where you're supposed to go to the secular government to get permission to meet together as Christians. And the last two years proved why you should be against that whole thing because they shut down when the government told them to shut down. And they followed all kinds of other things that were contrary to scripture, all because the government told them to, their federal government property. That's problem number one. Problem number two is you are separating what the Bible says that you are in church all the time. The church is the body of Christ. It's the body of believers. But when you have a building that's called the church, First Baptist Church or whatever, you name the church building there, you are separating your life into when you are in, you know, in church and when you are not in church. You know, well, I, I wouldn't tell this joke in church, uh, but, you know, out here, well, you are in church. And I've seen that thing. I've seen the practical, the, the philosophical aspect of it where people, you know, they think this way. But I've also seen the practical application of it. I've known plenty of Christians. I was raised in church buildings. Um, and I've known a lot of people, religious people, and they act completely different when they're not in church than when they do on Sunday morning between 9 to 12. All right? That's another big problem that I have with the thing. 501c3 incorporation separating your life between in church and outside of church all right problem number three uh, they are an extreme waste of money extreme waste of money i mean the the cost of these things is just astronomical it's crazy that's another big problem uh, another problem is you start to adopt all sorts of things that are not in scripture you have altar calls you have sunday best you have you know all the other things there you know, where they're going in and they're doing all these things and they go back to the Catholic Church. That's a problem, okay? Not to mention the fact that you are inviting lost people into these meetings. There's no scripture for that. And before you run off to 1 Corinthians 14, say when the, you know, about the church coming together in one place and there comes in those that are, you know, lost essentially, um, that's talking about coming together in the sense of meeting publicly. It's not saying that there's a building that they're meeting in. Very weak argument. I've had that one thrown at me over the years. Um, the church should come together, um, but that doesn't mean boards and nails and bricks and, you know, concrete block or something. Uh, the church is the people, and you can meet together anywhere. Okay, you say, well, why can't we meet in a building? Um, well, you can. That's fine. But when you're dressing a certain way to go to church, and you're going with all the trappings of the special building and everything else, that's where the problem comes in, you see. 
If there's a group of Christians and they say, hey, we have an old barn on so-and-so's land and we meet there and we sing hymns and we praise the Lord and everything else, and we were there during the whole scandemic and everything else, well, praise the Lord. Good for you. That's good. You know, if you're Bible-believing, I'd, you know, I'd love to come and visit or something if I was in the area. Absolutely. I don't have any problem in the world with that. What I have a problem with is when you depart from the Scriptures and you get this social club thing going, that's the problem, where you act a certain way and you do certain things and whatever else. That's what I'm condemning. And putting a church under government control is a problem. And like I said, the thing I was warning about for years is exactly what came to pass in 2020. And all these churches now are having to submit to federal government guidelines. That's a sin. I mean, you know, you have to close down for something that doesn't even exist. And if you get it, you're supposed to stay at home and not even go for emergency medical care or whatever else. And you might have it and not know that you had it. It's insane, but that means that you have to shut your church down. So, enough said on the whole thing, but I just feel that I need to continually say this because it just keeps coming out. These people, you know, I've learned over the years, one of Satan's favorite tactics to go after this ministry is people will come out and they'll say, Denlinger's a heretic, and they'll lie about me, and then they'll say, don't give him your money, don't support his ministry, He's evil, he's this, he's that. And most people, that's all the farther it goes. And they say, oh, oh, man, I guess I shouldn't. They don't even listen to what I'm saying. They don't even contact me and say, hey, is this true? I mean, again, like I said in one of my earlier videos that I'm doing today here, if you have a problem with me, if you have a question, write me and ask me and say, answer this in video. You know, clarify what you believe. So that's going to be it. Like I said, again, I'm going to put some videos at the end of this that will clarify from the scriptures why I believe what I believe about church buildings. Okay, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.